What's up everybody, it's your favorite tubby little tub boat's favorite nerd and today we are looking at Toy World's Wave Break which is their take on sea spray of the Masterpiece scale variety or at least Masterpiece-esque and we'll talk about that more as we go through. However, for the time being we'll just go ahead and get started on this fella. I will say there's a surprising amount of weight on this figure. I think I'm gonna weigh him real quick because I, it's it just, I found it interesting. Uh, let's see, let me see if I can get you a good shot on the scale. So we're on pounds, which is fine. 0.41. Let's see what Masterpiece Hot Rod weighs. 0 0.30. Just for a, a, a bit of food for thought. So let's talk about the boat mode. First of all, this was sent to me by Titan One, and of course they did send some candies along with it, as I've come to expect. Uh, and they gave me the same deal as before. Like, if I like it, go ahead and, and pay for it and, and keep it. And if I don't like it, just send it back. But either way, you get to do the review. Very kind to them and uh, very thoughtful. Good people over there. Anyway, for this, there are a couple little different things you can do. And I'm going to try to get access. But you know my fingers. There we go. So you can lift these up and you can straighten these out and then you have guns and you can kind of just close it down like that, I believe. I don't think there's any anything more that you can do with it. But let's keep it clean for now, shall we? Uh, and also there is like, it has a tendency to want to flip down. Like if you don't have everything lined up right, uh, they'll flip down into that little cavity and just become a pain to deal with. But as long as everything is lined up the best it can, you know, you should be fine. And then also there is, there's this, but let me see if I can't, there we go. And this is his guns. Oh, these are just tough to get into, uh, but there they are. Not, not, not the, not the best, right? Uh, you get your fingernail on that little ridge there, it should help. But that's them and you do get two of them uh, for what it's worth. I'm not sure how accurate that is to his weapon in G1 or even, even if he had one, I just don't recall. But that's how they are and they come together like this and then peg in onto the back. So let's talk about the boat finally. This is die cast, I feel like, this piece here, this top piece. Uh, it's painted obviously, the paint is a little scuffed up because um, they're painting over metal, it's not done the best. And then it sits on top of, of uh, yellow plastic. The yellow paint is all done really well, and then the blue translucent lucent plastics, both for the front windows and for the top piece here, was a smart choice. It comes across really well, and I totally dig it. And outside of that, that's about it. The propellers spin. You can tighten these screws here if they're not, uh, you know, if there's, if there's not enough tension. But, yeah, outside of that, it's pretty much straightforward. So let's transform it. Extend the front feet. You can move this whole section down and then rotate the feet down. This piece here, you have to flip these blue pieces in and it's a little tricky just manipulating them. And you gotta make sure that they're all the way in. I'll tell you what, we're gonna separate these arms as well since we're right here. It's just a tolerance thing. And then this whole section here with the legs rocks down on this armature here. It's a double hinge. And it's a tight tolerance as well. And then this piece plugs into there. And then that butt flap comes down. Take this white piece and just lift it up a little bit. Oh, shoot. Open this up first. My apologies. And then flip this up, flip the head up, and flip this down. Flip the arms down, and then this comes around the back end, so to speak. Separate the legs. Bend the elbows. And you got yourself a sea spray. I'll get uh, him cleaned up. We'll take a look at him. All right, so let's talk about it. As you can see, he holds his guns just fine. Actually, that wasn't in all the way, but he does. So, the head on a ball peg, as we saw. There's also a bit of kind of an ab crunch, I guess, uh, for being lenient. 
Um, doesn't help you a whole lot, but it's technically there, so I'll, I'll allow it. Head is on a ball peg, up to there, down to there, and swivels with light piping. Uh, you know how I feel about that. And if you don't, I hate it. And then we have arms that are on hinges. They're basically universal joints. They hinge out to here, and then they swivel. There's also, there's no bicep swivel, and there's a double-jointed elbow. Uh, once again, the, the tolerance is a little difficult to maneuver. Wrist swivel. No? Come on. No. No, they don't. Or if they do... They do. They're just really tight. The tolerances on this thing are so strange that it's, it's hard to tell. They do swivel. Okay, good. There is no real waist swivel. There's these side hip flaps here. But this piece does maneuver a little bit. Um, you can't really unplug without taking the whole body apart to sort of get the waist swivel. And then it kind of becomes not worth the cost of doing business. So you get like just ever so slightly, a couple degrees worth of a turn there. Not the best. The legs are on universals. They're frictioned. With the hip skirt out, you can get them full uh, Van Damme, and, but not the full Monty. And then the thigh swivel is built onto that universal. It's not full, fully articulated thigh swivel, but I think it's enough. Little uh, paint app there, a little blue and the gray. I like stuff like that. And then a knee on a single hinge that gets you shy at 90 degrees. The feet, they rock uh, back and forth here on this uh, sliding mechanism, uh, which is not ideal, but it does allow you to get an ankle tilt all the way down, of course, for transformation. And then not really anything up. And the rocker is built in on a hinge just above it to allow for a pretty wide ankle rocker. Uh, any detailings that we may have forgotten we've already talked about this translucent here let's see like this uh yeah some of this stuff just isn't tolerance the best little paint app there it's a nice touch that they didn't have to do but yeah it's uh it's it cleans up fairly decent from the back uh we'll, we'll talk about a lot of this in final thoughts but that's pretty much the figure the face has that white i can't tell if the white is paint it is so the white is painted unfortunately um you know in the cartoon he had a gray face so they they didn't go that route which is a bit of a bummer and they should have painted the eyes in my opinion and not use light piping on a masterpiece figure but yeah that's him Size comparisons is going to be where the rubber meets the road here a little bit. So there he is next to uh, his company mate, Cosmos. And now let's back out a little bit and we'll throw in some other ones. And we'll start to see how this becomes problematic. There he is with gears. Beachcomber. Bad Cubes Brawn. Like, he is a big robot. And I'm not sure that I'm okay with that. That's an awfully big sea spray for how I imagine the character. It just doesn't really seem to work. I was under the impression that their prime was going to be larger and then everything was going to kind of fall in line with the rest of the masterpiece sort of scale. But this definitely seems more in line with their prime. Now, I guess by that reasoning, so is Cosmos. But with Cosmos being like a spaceship and a bigger bot in general, as far as like, you know, just round, like I, I, it doesn't bother me. Like I'm okay with that. But Sea Spray does seem out of place here. Final thoughts wise, I feel like we have a lot to talk about here because there's a lot of objective and subjective things we need to cover. So let's talk about the negatives objectively. The negatives here are mainly the joint tolerances. The wrists are too tight, the elbows are too tight. You could argue the feet slide on those bars a little too easily. So there's just some inconsistencies in terms of tolerances. Articulation wise, everything works pretty well with the exception of the head and the waist swivel. The head is pretty much a swivel game here and the waist swivel is pretty much not there. The paint where it is applied is applied well, but I really feel like this is a bot that could have had a blue finish. There's not a whole lot of grinding of the blue against other pieces. It seems like this would have been a no brainer to, to kind of really lay on some paint, but most of the other paint is applied well. The only exception to that would be, of course, the, the yellow die cast bit at the top where the propellers are. Subjectively though, we have to talk about 
this elephant in the room. Like he's big, you know, and it, he may be too big for most people's shelves. The other thing is, is like, I just recently with the SCU guys, I looked at all of the third party sea sprays coming and Toy Worlds is hands down the most accurate to the cartoon model, hands down. With X Transbots being second, Aces Toys, if that's still a company, being third, and then Fans Toys being dead last in terms of G1 accuracy. So it has that going for it. The problem is, is it may still seem like a massive, and I do mean massive, misfit on your shelf due to the size. Also, with all the things they're trying to get with the accuracy, they miss the color of the face, which is a bit of a bummer. This might be die cast as well, this piece here. I think it is. I'm sorry for getting sidetracked. It's just that <clears throat> I'm not sure if this one does it. There, there's certainly some things it does right. I mean, it's a cool, it, it looks it looks like the cartoon model. Uh, it doesn't look exactly like it, but it looks pretty close. The problem is that the cartoon model isn't the coolest looking robot in the world. I just don't understand, I don't understand the size approach here. It just doesn't seem to fit. But it doesn't matter what I think of it. What matters is what Sea Spray thinks of it. And Sea Spray is a personal friend of mine. So let's get him on the phone. Call Sea Spray. Calling Sea Spray. All right, good. Let's put on speaker. Hello. Sea Spray. Hello. Hey, uh, did you see this Toy World version of you? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> What's I, I, I just signed off on that. <laughs> you didn't like it? Uh, not one bit. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> What's that's, wrong? Not, that's not me. What's wrong with it? Please don't break. I don't think I look like that one bit. <laughs> so are you going to get, like, lawyers on the job, or? Oh, I'll read on it. I called them yesterday. Are you going to sue? Is that, is that the plan? Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna know. They're, they're gonna wish I just f with C-Spray. Do you think you're gonna get some of that constructor money? Maybe I'll get something better than that. Ooh. What's the side I put How you been, Bob? <laughs> I've been good. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I was thinking about if you got the time one day, uh, take out on the boat, take my wife along, if you'd be good with that. Sure. Make a little amateur film, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did, though. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'll check back with you. Thanks for your time. Oh, no problem, man. <laughs> Take care. Hell has well. But, of course, there are pros. The plastic feels pretty good. The articulation works for the most part, with a few exceptions. It definitely has the presence of sea spray. Maybe a little bit too much presence. <laughs> It cleans up fairly well. It's moderately priced. You know, so I would say that if you're cool... Look. If you're good with the size of this and you want the most cartoon accurate sea spray available, this would be my recommendation. It has issues, but no issues that are true deal breakers if you're good with the size. That said, for me, the size is almost so far off that it's almost distracting. And it, it, it's, it takes away from the rest of the collection that I've built. So I will be sending this back to Titan One. This will not be for me. But I'm not, uh, at the same time, I'm not as hung up on the idea of having the most cartoon accurate sea spray. Uh, especially sea spray, a character that looked absurd in the cartoon. I also feel like if you look at the cartoon model, let me back out a little bit. Like, he does have this section here but it does sit a little bit further up. There's not as much gap here, and I feel like that's another place where they kind of miss the boat. It's funny because their, their toy art does it a lot better. Like that space is shortened. Um, inside the mask, it's painted gray on the face, and then it has the yellow mask. You know, it's just, it's funny that their artist got it right, you know, because he, he had a yellow mask also in the cartoon. So it's just, it's just an interesting, it's a, it's, it's a number of interesting choices here, uh, pretty much from the ground up. And, and when I say interesting, I mean interesting in, in a bad way, just interesting in, in decisions that kind of detract from the figure, um, which, which otherwise could have been good. But it's built well, most of the paint is painted well, most of it moves well, so if you can get with the sculpt of this thing, and you can get with the size, I think you'll be happy. That being said, it wouldn't make me happy. 
Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.